Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi guy. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to remotely access your Pi from your local network. We'll be using a piece of software called Putty, which is an SSH client. I'm going to explain that just in a minute. And I'm going to go through the dangers, pitfalls, why SSH is useful, what SSH is, how to do Windows, and uh, how to remote view your entire Pi's desktop. But before I start, I'm just going to announce that there's a kind of competition going on at the moment. Um, it's just who can, if anyone would like to design, redesign my logo, because it's not very good. And if you if you do redesign my logo or have any ideas for it, please, I'd be so grateful. And um, just email me at the guy at gmail.com if you come up with any ideas, or as I said, if you redesign it for me, it'd just be great. So, let's get started anyway. What is SSH? Now, SSH stands for Secure Shell, and Wikipedia's definition is a SSH, or Secure Shell, is a popular network protocol that allows for the exchange of data using cryptography for additional security. And basically, what this means is it allows communication between two computers over the internet. Now, note I say internet, and I do mean internet, that means your Pi is going to have to be connected to the internet in this tutorial, and also the computer that you're going to use to access your Pi also has to be connected to the internet. So, make sure that your Pi is connected to the internet via Ethernet or Wi-Fi dongle if you've got one. So, and it's most commonly used to log into a remote machine, such as a server, and what we're going to be doing is we, we're going to set up the Pi as a SSH server and then use whatever computer that you have, in my case it's just a Windows 7 PC, to log on to this server or the Pi and SSH will allow us to execute commands via the command line, however we'll be able to view the Raspbian desktop environment just as if we were viewing it as if the Raspberry Pi was plugged into the screen. So, basically SSH is really useful and it's a really good thing to know how to do. But what if I want to access my Pi outside of my local network? Uh, at the start of the tutorial, you might have noticed that I said that I'm going to show you how to remotely access your Pi through your local network. Well, basically, this is because this is easy. Um, however, if you want to access it out of your local network, that's going to be significantly harder. By network, I mean your router. Whatever's connected to your router is in your local network. So, so that's your Pi, whatever computers, iPhone, whatever's connected to your internet, whatever, whatever is connected to your broadband is connected to your local network. But say I go to somebody else's house or say a library and try putty there and try to access my Raspberry Pi, it's going to say connection refused. This is because you've got to imagine your router as a wall and um, as soon as you send a signal to that wall it's just going to bounce straight back off and straight back to you and refuse access. So what you're going to need to do if you want to do this, I'm not going to go through this in this tutorial, is you've got to port forward your router. Now, as I'm about to explain, when I come to downloading Putty, your router is made up into loads and loads and loads of different ports, thousands. And what you want to do is allow one port to be forwarded to allow access for, from out for ingoing commands. So this is... I've link to this website in the description below www.portforward.com and it's got loads of tutorials on how to set up your router to, to have one open port but um, I'm not going through it in this tutorial as every router is different and unless you've got the same router of course and uh, it's practically useless unless you have the same router as me which I doubt any of you will so but uh, there's quite a few dangers if you access your Pi outside of your local network. Now there's hardly, there's none, I'm going to say none, there's probably a few, uh, I'm not aware of, that uh, if you access your Pi through your local network. Let's just go on to port forwarding at the moment. As I said, port forwarding effectively opens up a hole in your wall. And this, this means that you then become vulnerable to people accessing your network, but as, I, as it's explained in portforwarding.com, you can stop that and with the right safety measures it can become reliable and you don't need to worry about that. As I said with local networking, like we're about to do in this tutorial, the the risks are none. 
you, you don't need to worry about anything if you're just doing it like I've been doing it so no need to worry about that so as I said we're going to be using some software called Putty which is a SSH client as I said and uh, I'm just going to show you how to download that so now we have to go to this website which is www.putty.en.softonic.com and the link for this website will be in the description below tell me if the link doesn't work and we are going to download Putty this website is safe I've already used it so no need to worry about that and um, just run through the download procedure once you've done that locate where you downloaded it to for me mine's on a on a um, USB thumb drive so it's here and here's putty so what we're going to do double click putty and you're going to be greeted by a box like this now this is basically the, the putty interface and before we go any further we're just going to download a few other things so again the download link for this piece of software will be in the description below we're going to download an x11 client called xming which works for Windows. I'm not sure about the compatibility for Linux or Mac. Don't think you need to worry about that. So Xming. This is a SourceForge download. So again, perfectly safe. No need to worry about this. I've used this before. Now, here we go. So the compatibility is Microsoft XP 7 2008. So just click download here. Again, run through the downloading process and find out where that's been saved. So, I've located where I've downloaded both. I've got Putty here, and Xming is downloaded into a folder with quite a few files. So, what we want to find is this Xming. Double click onto it. Now, it can be greeted by this lovely, rather plain crisscrossy textured box and you'll see no obvious changes apart from the little um, crosshair cursor no need to worry about that this is all good so what you should be seeing on your screen now is this and this now we're going to need to find out our Raspberry Pi's IP address which I'm going to show you now so now boot up your Pi, I'm using the Raspbian distro, I haven't tested this on any other distro and I think this is the only one this tutorial will work with. I do recommend using the Raspbian distro just because it's the most poorly used one. And first we're gonna need to do, what we're going to need to do is log in of course and then we're going to have to check whether our SSH server has been enabled or disabled. And we do that with by the Raspberry Pi configuration menu which some of you might remember if you watched my other overclocking videos. So we access that with sudo sudo raspi config. If you miss any of the commands, don't worry, they'll be in the description below. Raspberry Pi config is spelled R A S P I hyphen C O N F I G. Press enter, you'll be greeted by this lovely blue screen. And what we need to do now is scroll down using the arrow keys to SSH. Would you like the SSH server enabled or disabled? So enable it. SSH server enabled. Now just exit using the right arrow key, tw right arrow key twice. Press enter, and you'll see that Pi at Raspberry Pi will come back up. That means you've exited Raspberry Pi config. So, if your Raspberry Pi asks you to reboot, reboot does it says, but because I haven't changed anything, mine won't. Now what we're going to need to use, what now what we're going to need to do is find out what IP address our Pi users within our local network. So we'll use the command ifconfig spelled I F C O N F I G. Press enter. Now you're gonna see quite a few lines of text and you don't need to worry about any of it uh, except the one that starts INET. And it will say INET A D D R colon and then the, your IP address. So my IP address is here 192.168 that's what your number should start in and bear that in mind 
I'm going to go back to. So now that we know our Raspberry Pi's IP address, we can get on with enabling our party session. So this box here, hostname or IP address, is where we're going to need to put our IP. So just enter it in numbers and full stops. So 192.168. One 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 six, and then your port number should be 22 unless you know the wiser and um, if you don't know what your port number is then it's probably going to be 22 that I can't can't confirm that definitely make sure it's on SSH not telnet R login or serial make sure it's on SSH and you could click open right now and what it would do it would open a terminal session as if you're on your Raspberry Pi however we want to um, be able to use the desktop on our Pi so what we're going to need to do is maximize SSH down here and go on to X11 and then click enable X11 forwarding. We scroll back up and go to session. We'll find that all our settings are still here. You can save uh, your settings here, like I've got a saved Raju Pi setting. So if we click open, you'll probably get a text box for this asking if you want to uh, trust this. I've forgotten exactly what the message says because I've done this on this computer before. But um, just click yes. Now you're going to find a login page similar to this. And you should log in as your normal, as if you're logging into your RC Pi. So I use the Pi user, and then whatever your password is, press enter. You're going to see your RC Pi, or what you're greeted with when you start your RC Pi up from launch. And so you can do all of the stuff that you can do on your RC Pi from here in the terminal. So if we try a command like ls, we'll see that it lists um, everything in my current folder or directory. But uh, this, we want to actually re remotely view our desktop, don't we? So what we're going to use, make sure xming is open, as I showed you before. The command we're going to use is start lxdb. Not start x, that won't work. Start lxde. You press enter, you'll see a few lines of text. But if, if we then click on xming, we're going to see my Raspberry Pi or, and its desktop and um, so you can see all of all of the um, the windows work everything everything works you can play a few games in it though I don't think you can play Quake 3 all the way from your Raspberry Pi to wherever you are I can um, for example let's try and play X Invaders 3D and uh, this is actually playing from my Raspberry Pi and it's just displaying the images on my computer or laptop. It's not as fast as it was on my Raspberry Pi, but that's to be expected. So, that's pretty much how to do it. If I haven't been clear in any part of this tutorial, please tell me. I'd be really grateful if you could give me any tutorial ideas and as I said, if any of you could design me a logo, that'd be amazing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and this tutorial. Please subscribe and like and watch my other videos because that's what keeps more videos coming. And uh, I really suck at this game. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you tune in next time. Bye.